to children of Rodilia of Koina. Remember Sini. anger to the shop. C'est tout. C'est tout. Um, all right. So this passion, Voero, is a direct connection to the passion before, Pasha Schmoyz, as you all know. Pasha Schmoyz ended with a most um, shocking episode uh, that uh, Pare made, uh, made it even more difficult for the Eden as a result of Meshen Abenus uh, visiting Pare and asking him and telling him he should let Eden go uh, for three days. And Pare then made a totally an impossible type of a condition, right? Uh, build. Build me a house, but I'm not going to give you material to do it with. Um, <clears throat> and Moshe went back to Hashem, and he said, "Why did you send me to Pali? This is an amazing thing. Moshe Rabbeinu is questioning the neighbors. Hashem told him, go to Pari, I'm going to get eaten out. And Moshe Rabbeinu says, why did you send me to Pari? Look, he didn't, he didn't help. This whole, this whole possibility of it is, is kind of shocking. And the response to that comes this Pasha. Pasha Sva'era. But Hashem tells, Hashem tells Moshe that there is a contrast here between you and the always of Romi Yankif. Contrast, everybody knows what contrast means. Compare, contrast, difference. There's a difference. Just want to make sure we understand. Uh, Romi Yankif went through all kinds of initiatives. Total contradictions, so to speak, uh, from Hashem. As Ashi explains a little bit in detail, Abraham was promised that this land is going to be his, and when he needed a plot of land to bury his wife, he couldn't get it. He had to go and plead for it and pay for it good money. And Avram had a son at the end, at, at the very at the very ripe old age, at a hundred. And this was his, his promised son. And then all of a sudden, he used to take him to put him on the altar and shecht him. And Avram didn't hesitate one second, didn't cry, have any questions on us. Not even a question. Not even a question means. I don't need to understand. It's not that Abraham had a question and said, oh, probably Hashem knows what he's doing. There wasn't even that debate, that internal debate. Hashem said to him, take Yitzchok and put him on the altar. Take Yitzchok and put him on the altar. This was Abraham's complete reliance, complete attachment with, uh, with Hashem. Yitzchok similarly had Nisiyonis. 
Yitzhak was also told, this is you land, I'm going to give it to you. And then Yitzhak was pursued. You learned, Pasha Stoyles, he was pursued by the Plishtu. They didn't let him live. You know, he found water, one well, and they, and they told him, this is our well, next well, this is our well, next well. Until finally he moved all the way out, and they let him alone. This is my land. Hashem promised it to me, my land. Nothing doing. No questions. No questions. Yang cave. He could say even beyond everything else. Yang cave's whole life was one big Nisoy. Not like Avram, basically had a peaceful life, but he had certain, certain episodes, certain moments that, that were shocking. Yankov's whole life was in uh, one moment, one thing after another, where he was um, he was suffering difficulties, and there was no question. And Hashem is pointing this out to Moshe Rabbi. That says you did not have that stance, and that strength, and you questioned me right away. And therefore, the implication is that you, Moshe, should have learned from the others how they behave. Now, we need to understand if indeed Moshe Rabbeinu doubted Hashem. Is Hashem capable of accomplishing what He promised? Is Hashem intended to, to, to keep His word on all kind, any kind of these questions? The Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was, as the Torah itself attests, the biggest Navi that ever lived. For all times. The Torah says clearly, at the end of the Chumash, that there is not another Novi like Moshe. He was the only Novi at, at his level. No one before him and no one after him, like him. I don't think he knows what's a Novi. Who doesn't know what's a Novi? Yeah? yeah. Okay, because he likes it. Because he looks a little bit. Sorry. Worry about yourself. What is a Navi? Navi? <laughs> I know what a Navi is. <laughs> Navi. Um, what does it mean that Moshe Rabbeinu was questioning and the others were not questioning? And we know, as I pointed out, that actually Moshe Rabbeinu was, was of a higher Madriga than the others. This is why he was the one who brought the tape down. Because he was, he was above all those that preceded him and certainly above all those that succeeded him. And therefore the question is, what does it mean that Moshe have been a question Hashem? And this the Rebbe explains that the difference between Moshe and the others, surely it was not in a, qu a question of, of doubting Hashem and, 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 and a shortage of faith. There was a difference in their mode and the type of avoided, the manner in which they, they, relate, they related to Hashem. The others uh, were related to Hashem at the level and through their needles, through their emotions, through their attributes. As we know, Avram is called Chesed, Avram Oyhavi. Avram's great attachment to Hashem was through the attribute to the middle of Chesed of Ahava. And this also translated in his, in his activity in the world 
also in the form of Ahava. Avram's big thing was that he was a Machnis Oivet. He had an open house, and all the wayfarers from the desert used to come in to him, have a, have a, to relax and have a, 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 a delicious kosher meal. Um, Yitzchok, his avoider was to the Midas Agvura and Yira. Pachad Yitzchok. Yankiv, his avoider was also to the Midas of Rachamim and Tiferes. This is all at the level of Midas. Moshe Rabbeinu, his avoider was on, was the avoider of Chochmah. Intellect. His primary connection to Hashem was on the, on the intellectual level. Now, I just want to explain that before we go, we should not perceive this, this description um, in the same way as, as we have today the intellectual approach. The intellectual approach that that we are familiar with. Huh? The intellectual approach as approach as known today, surely this is not much of The intellectual approach as known today is the approach of doubt questioning and uh, um, uh, speculating everything the, the, the skepticism the cynicism this is not what Moshe Rabbeinu had nothing to do with that this is not what we mean by intellectual approach the intellect just like in Hasidus you know that there is Chabad Hasidus, which is what we are learning from the Altman Lab. And then there is what's called the General Hasidus. The General Hasidus is known as the Chagas Hasidus. Hasidus is based on meters. So the Chabad Hasidus is not a form of learning. Um, uh, based on skepticism and question and doubt. As we saw, with doubt you get no place. And with skepticism or cynicism uh, is only destructive. It does not bring you to any resolution, to any truth at all. All Yiddish state, whether it is Chabad, intellectual or emotional, all Yiddishkeit is based on the principle of Amuna. Amuna means that we know because we have, because our soul, our Neshama tells us, not because we have figured out and gotten some kind of, of an intellectual proof, but our Neshama tells us what the truth is, what we believe in. This is what the human being is. This is the, the primary, the principal inner of a human being. And he has an neshama. And he looks at the world through the eyes of his neshama rather than, than through the physical eyes. He sees the world from a slightly higher perspective, a lot higher perspective than the physical. He sees it with his neshama. And that's the basis of all of it, Hashem. But then, uh, this faith and this emuna has to be brought down and translated on, on, a, on a practical level. It's to be translated in terms of, of getting close to Hashem. In that, there are two different, generally speaking, these two different manners. There's the, the emotional, attachment to Hashem, and then there is intellectual, the recognition of the truth of Hashem, and His poignance, and so forth. This is what, we, what Hasidus Chabad is teaching, 
that one has to has to know the the has to first learn and understand and know the truth of Hashem. Not has a solemn to debate with his, with his nefesh and bahamis, and not to to go through a period of skepticism and doubt, but to, to fully understand what it is that he knows is the truth. This is the, this, this is the Chabad. Moshe Rabbeinu's approach to Avedis Hashem was approach to you know, now approach, you know, his, his, the way that he relates to Hashem was through this, to the intellect. This is why Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who brought the Torah, because Torah is essentially Chochmah. <clears throat> Whereas the Oboes, they Avedu was through the Nidus. And this is the difference and how it, it translated in terms of asking the question or not asking the question. The always, because that their connection was on this needless and an emotional level, they, didn't, they did not have the need to ask for clarification. Whatever they were said, that's what they accepted. Moshe Rabin, because his union was Chabad, was Chochmah Dino Vadas, the intellect, the nature of the intellect is that it needs to know and understand. And unless he knows and understands, he can he has a difficulty in relating to it. Not because he doubts, but because it's not, it's not real. The reality is formed by the basis of the fact that he understands it. And this is why Moshe Rabbeinu asked Hashem clarification, why did you send me? Because, because this is the, the um, nature of the intellect, to get clarification, to get clarity in what's happening. So, in effect, precisely, precisely, exactly, because Moshe Rabbeinu had this higher level, that he knew Hashem through the intellect, at the, at the intellectual level, and the Chabad level, precisely because of that, he, he, he had to ask the question. Because of his higher level, he had to ask the question. They always didn't have to ask the question. They connected to Hashem emotionally, and, and they, there's no, no, need to, no need to clarify. The principle in this is that there are, there are generally two levels in the Hashem. There is a level that's called Kabbalah soil. Kabbalah soil means you, you accept what Hashem says without questioning because, because you relate to Him and you sub, subjugate yourself to Him. Whatever He says goes. And then there is the, the, the understanding, the Nasser and Nishma essentially what we are learning and going to learn later on. The, the trying to, to have a personal relationship, personally understand it. Not because you're that, because the, but nevertheless, this is the nature, that I need a personal connection to it. The intellect does not allow for Kabbalah soul. This is the nature of the intellect. How can I accept? I need to understand. I need to understand. This is, this is the only way I can, I can connect to it. And Hashem is now, in effect, pointing out to Moshe that the others had it right. They did the Kabbalah Surah. But we are saying that Moshe was on a higher level than the others. And because he was on a higher level than the others, this is why he didn't have the Kabbalah Surah. What then is the, is the response that the Hebrews gives him? 
the responder of Yerusha Jerusalem is that now has come the time that that the whole there was going to be a breakthrough in the world, and there's going to be a breakthrough even for Moshe, such that the intellect will be able to to relate to Kabbalah. Sorry. Normally, by nature, intellect cannot relate to Kabbalah. Sorry. But this, the, the whole the whole Mitzrayim episode, the whole enslavement in Mitzrayim, and particularly the very end, which was the most difficult, uh, complete destruction, so to speak, of the of the morale of the people. This prepared them and prepared the whole, the, the Eden, and prepared Moshe Rabbeinu, in effect, and the whole world for this breakthrough that's going to take place after we even come out of the time. And what, when is this breakthrough ultimately accomplished? After even came out of Mitzrayim, and they went through Kriyas Yamsuf, and they reached Matan Torah. At Matan Torah, there was a complete change in the status of the world. And it's, and it's the whole process, the whole principle of Avodah Hashem had taken a big, big change. And this is what Hashem is telling Moshe. That now has come the time that you, Moshe, should acquire this Mida of the Orbis, which is not natural to you. Kabbalah soil on the intellectual level. <clears throat> How Hashem, Hashem say this to you, to Moshe? He said to Moshe that, first of all, he tells him the contrast that are, the always headed by it. And he said that, that this union that the always did not yet experience, you're going to experience now. Aniyavai. And ultimately, this is going to come out in, in modern time. So I want to discuss this whole this whole principle here. Uh, Kabbalah soil in general, Kabbalah soil and the, and the, of the intellect. But just to present it orderly, by Martin Torah, Um, the Gemara points out, Mitzvah Shomar Katu, which will discuss whatever aspects. Um, <clears throat> what happened in Matan Torah was really a fundamental change in the way, in the, in the relationship between Hashem and the world. It was not merely that we got the Torah here. There was a complete change over. And the change was, as the Gemara describes it, very simple. What it says, that this is, that uh, it's com compared to, so, to a king who had declared that the people up on the mountain should not descend down to the bottom of the mountain, people on the bottom of the mountain should not ascend on top of the mountain. And then, so therefore there was a, there was, so to speak, a demarcation line, a break, a separation between those on the bottom and those on the top. They cannot interact. And, and then the, he, he nullifies this rule and breaks through this barrier. And therefore there is El Yoinim. El Yoinim, those who are above, can come down the mountain, and those who are Tachtoinim can rise up the mountain. This is only a kind of a, a simplistic illustration of, of a very profound principle. And the principle is that at Matan Torah there was a, a nullification of the rule, of natural rule of the world, where Hashomayim, that there, there is Hashem and the world, and Hashem and the world are on two different levels, and there is no direct connection that the world should recognize God in this directly, or a Godness should come down into the world. It was all, so to speak, at a distance. But Martin Torah, the, the inter interaction and the interweaving and the, the complete permeation and, and, and interconnection between godliness and world made became possible. 
This is what happened in modern times. Martin Teurer, we said before Moshe Rabin was a great Navi. There were other Navi. Martin Teurer, the entire Jewish people. The entire people. The, the, the uh, male adults, children, women, and, 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 and little kids, everyone. While being here on this earth, heard Hashem speak to them. This was not a form of nevuah. Nevuah is, is it, it pertains to a very special person after great preparation and great insight, and great spirit, spiritual elevation and physical transformation, purification. And then also at certain times, there was only one Novi in, in, in world history that was able to speak to Hashem anytime he wanted. That was Moshe Rabbi. But otherwise, Naveen had their Navua only in certain moments. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a, a, a common affair. And here, entire people stood there at Hasinai, and they heard Hashem speak to them. Hashem descended on the mountain. And they saw this, this entire uh, miraculous uh, uh, view. There was fire, and there was smoke, and there was and there was and there was and there was, and there was Hashem's voice. This is this constitutes a break in the separation between. That which is higher than world and world. And this, in fact, is the effect of Torah. Hashem came down, to the, uh, came down into the world, and revealed himself in the world, and Torah makes it possible. Torah makes it possible for every individual person to rise up to any heights without limits. To Torah, to Avoida, particularly now we have Chassidus and Primus Torah. Torah makes it possible for every person to rise up to the highest. Possible or impossible? Huh? Possible. possible. Is it possible, yeah? Possible. Possible. Yeah. What, what, what is your question? Nothing. I just saying. I thought I missed it. Is it possible? Yes. Torah, as I said before, is Chochmah. This is the Chochmah that, that the Hashem's Chochmah that was brought down to Moshe. But as you also learned, Torah is not just a wise way to live in the world. Torah is purely Hashem's wisdom. Which means this is, this is the, the, the viewing of the world from a higher perspective. From, from God's perspective. Like it says, the Bresh is born with the Shemaim, the Horus, and the Torah describes the creation of the world. The world was first created in Torah. And then, and then from Torah it was created in fact. It's not the opposite way around. But the world was created and then we described how the creation took place. The Torah was instrumental in creating the world. And this is what was revealed at the time of Martin Torah. This is why in the Torah, a mitzvah, a mitzvah has, has a power to transform and change the world. A mitzvah is not merely a good act. It actually can, can have an effect on the physical world. 
Like the example, the illustration for that is that if you take a pair of film and you put on film, film is a physical, a physical uh, uh, box, a physical piece. But if you do a mitzvah with it, that physical piece becomes becomes holy. It has a kedush because the mitzvah can transform that physical that piece of parchment. In other words, the union of Torah is an exact answer to Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, we said, is, is this, this intellectual, this intellect, this chokhmah, that cannot descend downward, that cannot descend into Kabbalah soil. He has to stay on the intellectual level. Torah provides that the highest, the intellect, can descend down to Kabbalah soil level. And this is Hashem's answer to Moshe, that what this is all going to lead to is that the, that you, Moshe, will now reach the Madrigi where you will be able to serve Hashem with Kabbalah soil rather than be limited to the intellect. What is so special about Kabbalah soil? Kabbalah soil means to accept the yoke, to accept what is being said. Acceptance bichlal, it, it is, generally speaking, this is a simplicity. It's a simple person you know, it accepts. Um, a wise person questions, must know and understand. And if he doesn't understand, it's hard for him to go and do it. And yet we say, Kabbalah soil, this is of such a caliber and such quality that even Moshe Rabbeinu had to be raised to a high madrege in order for him to acquire that quality. What is, what is in this Kabbalah soil? So the principle that I want to explain about this is we find ourselves, we are in this world. Some created the world. World, by definition, is an entity where godliness is concealed. Because if you see godliness, then you don't see the world. Like the Alter Rebbe explains in Mishal Yuchad Vayamunah, Tab explains that even in tiny before, should we be permitted to see the Koya Khaliki, the godly power that creates the world, then we won't see any world. Because it doesn't exist by itself. It exists only because there's a godly power that maintains it. And the reason we see world is because we don't see the godly power. I'll answer your question after that. Okay? Can I ask? Moshe Rabbeinu argued with Hashem all the time, like he argued more than any of the other Rabbeinu. So, how did he accept the yoke, like that, that Avram and every, like Avram just accepted what Hashem told him and gave him, and, and Moshe would like argue with him constantly? Like what, for instance? Like when Hashem told him, go to Mitzrayim and talk to Pharaoh, and he's like, well, I don't have the, the words to speak, my, my, my language is bad, I, my brother... No, that's, 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 that's not, that's not, that's a different calendar. That's not comparable to ask Hashem, how come you did this? Avram also debated with Hashem. When he came to the destruction of Sdaim, Hashem, Hashem, Avram pleaded with Hashem. Yep. And he said, how can you do this? If there was one it's not one. comparable to this. It's not comparable. This is like doubting Hashem's leaders. It's a completely different thing. So I want to explain, explain the principle of Kabbalah soil. as an important principle to understand because, uh, because 
very often we mistake this. Um, you know, people have an expression, blind faith. Saying, oh, we accepted you blind faith. And we have to understand that blind and faith are two opposite things. There's nothing more bright and more light than faith. Faith is something that is very clear and very bright. It's not blind. The principle of Kabbalah's oil has a different implication completely than do you have doubt or not have doubt. Moshe Rabbeinu did not have any doubt in Hashem, as we said before. The principle is what is the method, the means by which we connect to Hashem. Essentially, we can describe that connection in two ways. Normally, if someone asks you, do me a favor, so you say, of course, sure, I'll do you a favor. So what transpired over here was, there's another person and you, and he asked you to do you a favor, and you considered, um, should I do him a favor? And you decided, yes, I'm going to do him a favor, and do it to him. Do it for him. So this favor, this deed, does not constitute that you and him are one thing. He asked you this thing, and you considered it. It only says that you understand him, or you have, a, you have, uh, you have an ava for him, or jira, you have a, a certain feeling for him, and you did it, but you still two, remain two separate entities. And one person does it for somebody else. This is normal interaction. And in order for that interaction to take place, when the two separate entities, then of course, if someone asks you to do something, number one, you have to know first of all what to do, what you want to do, and you have to assess, figure out, can I do it? How is it going to interfere with my other duties? And if it's going to interfere with the other duties, maybe I can do it. And all other considerations, and once all other considerations are taken care of, then you decide, you, know, you agree and say, okay, I'll do it. And even after you agree, it only means that you've considered on your own this, the, 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 the righteousness and the justice for you to do it, and you and decide to do it. Kabbalah soil is of a different caliber, a different nature. Kabbalah soil is primarily, primarily described as, in terms of illustration of there being a boss, a, a, a melech, a sar, and you are his avid, you are a slave, you have no say in the matter at all, you have no no personal decision power, whatever or whatever, and you, you just do it spontaneously. You don't have to consider, should I do it or not? There's no consideration, should I not or should I not? Should I or should I not? I don't have the, 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 I'm not in a position to make decisions on my own at all. This is basically what's called Kabbalah's oil. That's what's called oil. It's a yoke. It's just like a yoke that's put on the behemoth. You put a yoke on the behemoth and you pull the rein, and the behemoth walks wherever you lead it. The behemoth doesn't make a decision, oh, you want me to go there. <laughs> it goes where you, where you pull it. There's no decision process. So what is Kabbalah's oil? How is Kabbalah's oil coming to our As I mentioned many times, Hashem gave us the Torah because we are human beings, because we have seich, because we have needles, not because we are donkeys. Where is Kabbalah Singh coming? A 
And the explanation for this is that I'll step back a little bit and perhaps analyze for a moment um, actually the relationship between a behemoth and a human being. It's an interesting phenomenon. A behemoth is infinitely more powerful than a human being, physically. Stronger. And then a little child can take a big horse, a powerful animal, and lead it and, 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 and lead it one way and the other way, to tell it to do this, tell it to do this, I mean, direct it to do all kinds of things, and it does it. It does it. Why is it? What's, what's inherent in this? A behem is a behem, it's not very wise. But the Abisha has put into a behem this cognizance that a human being is its boss. A human being is the boss of the world. As a matter of fact, the Gemara says even more that even a chayero, or a chayero means a wild beast, a wild beast would not attack a human being. If, if, unless it appeared to him like a behemoth. Because a human being didn't maintain his purity, his human purity. He acted and lived like a behemoth. So to a behemoth, he appears like a behemoth. But if he would see the intellect in the human being, he couldn't attack him. Because, because it's in different category. Even a behemoth recognizes that. How did the brother tell that you got killed by I'm saying, this is the... That's not, it, it didn't happen. And, uh, and the, the possibility is there, but it's not something that happens. It happens that often. And, uh, and uh, uh, well, this is, this is a no, even, even today, you know, so that uh, and the whole world is at a very low level. Still, there is a tremendous difference. Tremendous um, and the payment has respect for the human being, recognizes that this is this is not and this is not part of its in, in its level. So this is, so to speak, within the within the structure of the world. Then comes a human being. The human being. He judges everything of his sale. He knows right and wrong, you are right, you are wrong, this is the right thing to do, this is the wrong thing to do. Then there is a Kabbalah soil in the human being itself. How can it be Kabbalah in the human being? Kabbalah in the human being is... Okay, now I'm coming back to, to explain this. Thing. Normally, godliness is hidden from the world. Therefore, how do we know the presence of God in the world? We know it through our intellect. Because we understand, we see our Seichel tells us that the world was a godly creation. And we relate to it that way. But then, this is when we know the godly presence in the world through understanding the world. Like we see the world. I explained to you the other day, Avraham of Imam, Abraham Avinu, the, the Gemara said, the Major says, Abraham Avinu was going around trying to understand what's going on in the world. What's making the world, the world move like this. First he thought, maybe it's the sun, maybe it's the moon, like all the people around him. All the people that with the sun. Until he came to realize that the world actually is being led by a force that is completely greater and outside of the world. He saw that, that the world represents a force that is, that is not contained within the world itself. It's not a natural, for, not natural or, or worldly force. And this is how he came to see, to recognize Hashem. But this is all still the knowledge of Hashem 
uh, through the process as a result of recognizing what's going on in the world. We see the world is, is, a, is a, a great creature and a creation and a miraculous creation and therefore we recognize that there is a great creator behind that. But see Hashem himself that we cannot see. We see it because we see world, not Hashem. In order to be able to, to do our witness Hashem directly to Hashem, not through our seichel, through our understanding, through our feelings, but directly because of a godly presence. This is called Kabbalah's oil. Kabbalah's oil means, I see Hashem standing there, Hashem tells me to do this, so who's going to question? Of course you do it. And then you see, and, 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 and then you, and you recognize that this uh, Hashem, the way you recognize Hashem there is not only as a creator of the world, but as higher than the, than the creator, world, higher than the world altogether. How do you see that? This is what's going to happen. This is the, the breakthrough at Matan Torah. Before Matan Torah also, Avram knew about Hashem, Yitzhak knew about Hashem, Yankin and Hashem, all the Shvotim learned Torah and so forth. Hashem was known. But it was known from a distance. It was known through the world. By Matan Torah, there was a breakthrough where Hashem descended into the world. And then it became possible to know Hashem directly, not through the world. To have, to have a recognition of Hashem's presence directly. This is what makes possible that you should, you can have, that even the intellectual can have Kabbalah Because now we, we know Hashem not through our intellect, not through our emotion. We know Hashem not through the world. We know Hashem directly. We know the truth of Hashem directly. Excuse me? I'll explain to you. If you see a cup of water over here on the table, and you only see it on the table, that is nothing else, you know that a human being came and put it down. Right? You, uh, right. However we know, but you know instinctively. Right? That this cup of water was put down here by a human being. It didn't come flying down by itself. Right? So you said, a, a cup, this cup is a human, of a human vessel that a human being uses. So it must have been put down here by a human being. And you're positive of it. Without any doubt. Compare that, the exact thing, with your knowledge that the human being put it down, when you see the human being put it down. Here, I'm putting it down. Huh? It's not more sure. It's more direct. You understand? Before also you are 100% sure. Hundred percent sure, but you didn't see the human being. You saw the, the you saw the sign. You saw the world, but you didn't see the human being. But when you see it happen, and then this is direct. This is called direct. When you know something as a result of your logic. Which is, and, and, and it's not just this logic, even the simple logic as this cup having been put down the only ages, everybody understands that. And you have absolutely no doubt. Still, it is what's called an indirect knowledge. Because you know the cup, and you know this kind of cup doesn't work on its own, <laughs> then you know that somebody put it down. But when you see somebody put it down, then you, then you see the actual fact. You see the hand and the person put it down? Then you have a completely different relationship to, not to the cup, but the person who put it down. Oh, it's yours, right? It's a completely different thing. Uh, the, the, in order to be able to have a virus Kabbalah soil in the Seichel, the Midas can have Kabbalah soil 
even through, so to speak, through the indirect process. But Seichel, which needs to know everything clearly, and yet he, he abandons that and says, whatever is being said, that's what I'm going to do. That is only possible when you, when you have like Hashem, Hashem's presence in the world itself. Not through any other, not through any facilities. Understand? And this is what Hashem has answered my shem. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu was questioning how come you did such a thing? How come you sent him to Papa? And you made it more difficult for me. So it was a and Hashem said to Moshe that what is, what is, is supposed to be happening, what's going to be happening now is something completely different than anything that you've known before. This is a preparation for Matan Torah. And therefore, to prepare for Matan Torah has to be what's called extreme cleanliness, a clean cleansing. Cleansing. cleansing cleaning. Elevating. Yeah. And then as a result of that, you reach the point where even Moshe Rabbeinu, whose primary greatness is in his intellect, will also actually relate to Hashem through Kabbalah Because Hashem's, own, Hashem's presence is going to be in the world directly. And this is, this is what was given. They'll learn and they'll talk about it later in which Hashem, as the weeks progress. But the new from Matan Torah, Torah. We learn Torah, we all try to understand the Torah. But the way we learn Torah, as we spoke another time before, the way we learn Torah and we try to understand it, is in the, in the method, as we mentioned once, the method of Nasev and Nishma. That first we learn it and we know absolutely that this is Hashem's word. This is the reality. First we, we accept it. And then we learn it. Then we try to understand what is it that we accept. It. And only that way can we actually learn Torah and absorb it. And actually have Hashem, so to speak, Hashem's word in our mind. The, the, the words of Torah are not words of wisdom. The words of Torah are the words of Hashem. This is Hashem's presence in the world. And the way we, 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 we learn it is first we take these words as Hashem's words. This is, the, this is the, the Hashem's presence in the world. And we try to digest it either in our intellect, in our emotion, and then bring it down to practice. And this is how it is possible to do Torah mitzvahs, Bekabolo soil, to do Torah mitzvahs even if we don't fully understand it. Because a human being, like I mentioned many times, like I said before even, that the neighbors didn't give us a Torah to make us less than intellectual, less than human beings. He wants to make us bigger than human beings. Not less, not to uh, 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 re uh, take away from us our wisdom, but to increase our wisdom. How does he increase our wisdom? So, wisdom in the world is built on the question, on the basis of question and doubt. This wisdom of Torah is not based on question and doubt. This wisdom of Torah is based on the uh, godly teaching. And and by trying to, by, by accepting this godly teaching and absorbing it and, and, and learning it, this, this brings out, this develops in a person a new level of wisdom that he could never reach on his own.
so that the, 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 the learning of Torah, this is not, in other words, not that you're first wise and then you learn in Torah. The Torah makes you wise. Brings out new capabilities in a person to understand and know, and know Hashem. This is the chart that, that Moshe Rabbeinu was recommended, so to speak, that he should learn from the Ovis, even though he was higher than the Ovis. But, but Moshe Rabbeinu had to reach a high Madrigi in order to have the quality of the Ovis of Kabbalah. And, and then the Rebbe says an interesting thing in this Sikha. By the way, not everything I said to you is in the Sikha, just in the, in the point. But the Rebbe says another thing in the Sikha. That in, in, in this passage it says, I showed my repeat. Um, to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yankit. And, Yang, and Rashi says, I'm sure you all noticed, Rashi says, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yankit, Bo'eiro el ho'ovis. I showed myself to the Ovis, to the fathers. So everybody has a question, what is Rashi adding over here? Avram, Yitzhak, and Yankit, what the Ovis? What's Rashi's comment mean? What is the additional thing in here? Bo'ira Lohavis. And the Rebbe explains that the point that Rashi wants to point out is that the principle of Ovois, Ovois is fathers. And one of the qualities of a father is that he gives over his qualities, Birusha, to his children. Birusha, in, you know, in inheritance. Everything that the father go has gives all, comes over. He gives over to the next generation and to the next generation. In other words, he is not only standing on his madrigya, but he can also go down to lower madrigya to the next generation. <coughs> Moshe Rabbeinu, whose inyan is intellect, intellect cannot descend down. Intellect can stay, stays in its own place. Like when it comes to doing a deed, doing an, um, an action, the intellect will never, will never compel a person to do anything. The emotion will compel him to do something. But the intellect, can, he can understand things and will never come to do it. So the Rebusha said, the Rashi points out, the Rebusha says that it's come the time when the intellect has to be like a father. The intellect should also be able to descend and give down to the lower madre, come down to the lower madre. So, in summation, this is the Hashem's answer to Moshe, and essentially this is what brings us to Martin Torah, and this is what the principle of Torah is, like I mentioned before, that the union of Torah is, even though it's all intellectual, it's all apiseichum, but it's a different kind of seichel. It's a seichel that you acquire through Kabbalah Sun. Normally, seichel requires that you should question and dig and, uh, and doubt. That's a worldly question, it's a seichel. But God's seichel is learned completely different. With Kabbalah Sun. First you accept it, and then that begins to build and to re- reveal your own seichel. It goes, in, it, it makes, it builds you also and, and, and reveals to you things that, that you could never even imagine that you will be able to understand. This is exactly how, how what, what, what Thomas Taylor has on the first. I'll take one more moment and to give us an, another illustration of this principle. Again, we will, we will talk about my greater length in, uh, later on in, in the past after that. But by Kriyas Yamsuf, he knew faced with the Yamsuf, and the Pave was chasing them from the back, and they were in danger. They didn't know what to do. So the Yamada says that they four, there were four different groups People came up to Moshe Rabin with four different suggestions what to do. 
One said, let's go back to Mitzrayim. One said, let's make war with them. Four different suggestions. And Hashem said to Moshe that none of these suggestions are valid. None of them. Why not? There's a young over here. There's a sea. The reason they're not valid is that because these four suggestions are based on the principle of what can be done within the nature of the world. In the nature of the world, you can do either wage war with them, go back to them, jump in the sea. You can do these four different possibilities. But now, but yes, Yamsu, you were in the, in the, something different is going to happen. Something which is not in the nature of the world. What's going to be is a new revelation where the Yamsu is going to split. And we're going to discuss it then. And when the Yamsu splits, it's a, it's a new revelation completely. And therefore, these, these four suggestions completely don't have no validity whatsoever. The same thing is in Limudatayim. You know, you, the, the, you approach the Lord and say, oh, I don't know, I don't understand. How do you get to understand it? By, by taking it and by learning it. This is, it opens up a new view, a new window to your nefesh, to your nesham. And you begin to understand that which yesterday you could not even dream that you could possibly understand. This is why the Torah is called food in London, in, in, in Tanya. The Torah is called Mozon. Just like food, when a person eats, it makes a person strength, strong. The Torah makes a person strong. The Torah makes a person stronger and opens up his seichel and, and brings out new koiches in him that he never had before. Rebbe should help Bless each one of us here that we should learn to eat the Kabbalah soil so that it becomes healthy food in our nefesh and, uh, and, uh, and uh, we grow to be good and healthy in the